In part 4 of lecture 5, we will look at output devices. Computer monitors are the single most commonly used output device. The computer displays text for us to read, or pictures, or videos to look at. In this mode of operation, computer monitors are only output devices. We don't communicate back to the computer with this kind of monitor. But when we have a touch screen where our pointing, pinching, stretching, and so on tells the computer to select, shrink, or enlarge something on the screen, it is serving as both an input and an output device. Many of the more common forms of monitors use liquid crystal display technology, which is also known as LCD. Light is filtered through a layer of liquid crystals that turn partially opaque when a current is applied. The only problem with a monitor like this is that it relies on another light source reflected off the screen, unless there is a light source within the monitor. Image quality is very important. So many of us use our computers to view pictures and watch videos. What determines how good the image is? First, there is screen size, obviously. It's easier looking at a monitor with a larger screen. The measurement that we use is the length of a diagonal from the upper left to lower right of the screen, or the lower left to the upper right. This standard measurement goes back to the early days of television, when screens were round, and they used the diameter of the screen as a measure. As we went toward rectangular screens, the diagonal was the closest measurement on a rectangle that could be compared to a circle's diameter. Response rate is important. How quickly can the picture change? We use the time it takes for a pixel to change from black to white and back to black. This is as big a change as one can expect. Dot pitch is the distance between like-colored LEDs, or light-emitting diodes. Color monitors have three separate colors for each pixel, red, green, and blue. The other colors that we see are different proportions of these three. So we measure the distance from one pixel to the next between LEDs of the same color. Screen resolution is measured as we do for still images, as the number of horizontal and vertical pixels that are displayed on the screen. Displays on tablets, handheld devices, retail store self-service checkouts, and ATMs provide output, but also collect input by using touchscreens. Most of them will display a virtual keyboard on the screen instead of using a physical keyboard. Display devices need something within the computer to tell them which pixels get turned on and which ones get turned off. And that means you need the circuitry that figures that out, as well as providing that information to the monitor. One type of circuitry for this is built into the computer system's board. This is known as integrated circuitry. The other method of implementing this is to have a circuit board on which the graphics circuitry is mounted. This is known as dedicated graphics. The circuitry is used solely for this purpose. Where the circuitry is mounted is not the most important part of this. What is much more important is where this processing is done and where is the display image stored in memory. Integrated graphics uses the main CPU for this purpose and the display image is usually stored in a portion of main memory. If you have dedicated graphics, the processing is done on a separate processor called the graphics processing unit with special memory set aside for storing the video image. 
not surprisingly, dedicated graphics is more expensive and performs a lot better. Series gamers make a point of getting a computer with dedicated graphics. The two most common printers these days are laser printers and inkjet printers. Laser printers focus a laser beam on a mirrored drum which picks up a static electric charge that makes toner particles stick to the drum and those particles are ground onto the page under heat and pressure. This is modeled on how photocopiers work. Inkjet printers have a print head that is a nozzle that sprays inks on the page in a way that it forms letters or images. Inkjet printers typically use four colors cyan, a light blue, magenta, a light pink, yellow, and black. Combining these allows an inkjet printer to spray out whatever color it needs. Multifunction printers that can also scan, make copies, and can fax things can use either inkjet or laser technology. We are beginning to look ahead to the idea of the Internet of Things where there are smart sensors that work behind the scenes to gather data that can be used to improve life. It can pick up that your dog is barking or by using GPS that your car isn't in your driveway. It can detect motion and see that someone is approaching your home or that it's dark outside and your porch light isn't on. Everyone seems interested in autonomous vehicles that can drive themselves, which some people believe may drive more safely than we do. In general, these work by using a sense, plan, act algorithm. The idea is that we sense and gather data, plan which means analyze it and determine a course of action, and then act, carry out those planned actions. Computers will need the ability to operate several sense, plan, act loops at the same time. Here we see an example of the sense, plan, act algorithm. First we sense. Vehicle sensors gather the raw data about the environment and the vehicle status. We know about other traffic around, pedestrian, obstacles, other cars. Then we plan. Based on this, we slow down and we resume speed based on the traffic around us and other impediments to our trip. Last, we act. Signals go to the vehicle's controls to carry out the planned actions that have been computed. 